Good morning, how are we doing today? My name is James Sweeney, aka Split Suit. Welcome back to another video. And today we're gonna to review the out of position C betting quiz from Red Chip Poker. We released this quiz uh, maybe a few months ago, right before WSOP, and I did promise that we would do a full answer key, full data review, so this is that video. So again, this is the out of position C betting quiz. If you've already taken it, great. If you haven't taken it yet, pause now. I'll leave a link in the description box. You can go take the quiz first, then come back and we'll start hacking through this thing together. So without further ado, let's look at the answers. Let's talk about what's right, what's wrong, the strategy of everything, and see what other players just like you said they would do in these same exact spots. So just to remind you of the quiz format, we are testing out of position C betting skills very, very specifically. And to simplify this even further, we just said, okay, fold around to you, you're on the small blind, you open to three big blinds, big blind defends. So there's six in the middle, 97 remaining. What are you going to do first to act on these 10 boards with these 10 hands? Again, you can fire a C bet, you can check call, check raise, or check fold. What would you do in all of these spots? And at first glance, it may seem like, well, these are all very, very different hands. And what should I really do here? What am I really taking away from this? But if you pay very close attention to the answer key and also this video, you'll start to find some very common themes and be like, oh, these are things that I can apply in a lot of out of position C betting spots, right? We're not just talking about small blind versus big blind, but let's just say you open early position and the button defends, or you open middle position and the cutoff calls. These are things that do come up, they do arise, and we need to have a plan of attack when it comes to handling out of position C bet spots. That's really what we're working on here. And just to note, by the time this video goes live, the scoring system has been updated. In the original run, you only got full credit for the most correct answer. No partial credit was given, but in the updated scoring system, you do get partial credit for correct answers that maybe aren't the most correct, but are still valid and plus EV. You now get partial credit for those as well. So if you took this a while ago and the first time you're like, why the heck did I score so low? That is why it was a little bit limiting in that first run. Go back, retake it, see what your updated score is and then continue this video. And then one final note here is on the data that we're working with. So all of the quiz answers that you guys gave, originally that came from about 4,000 people who answered this quiz. And if you were part of the original batch, thank you so, so much. So I took that 4,000 and to try to improve the quality of that data, I said, okay, let's get rid of people that failed the troll test. So I put two honeypot questions in here. If someone answered the clearly trolly answer for both of them, I removed their responses altogether. And if someone took the quiz multiple times, I only kept their first response, I deleted all of their future ones. So that took about a 4,000 sample size down to about 3.3,000, which is still totally usable for this kind of exploration. I just wanted you to have an idea of the sample size we're working with so you can say, okay, this is good or not so good data. I'd say this is pretty darn usable data and we can go forward from there. So with that as a preamble, let's start talking about question one and we'll go all the way from one to 10 and rock and roll throughout this video. All right, so in this first question, we have ace five of hearts and the board is king seven deuce with two hearts. And of course we have our four options. We could fire a C bet. We could check with the intention of check calling, check with the intention of check raising, or check with the intention of check folding if we face a bet. So this kind of forces us to not just say, okay, are we gonna check? Are we going to fire a C bet here? Rather, if we do check, what is the line we think is best here? So the input that people gave here is that 68% of people said they would fire a C bet, 15 said check call, 17 said check raise, and 0% of people said check fold, of course, after I get rid of the trolley answers. So the recommended best action here would be to check raise. And one of the major questions you wanna ask yourself when playing a draw is, do I wanna play for stacks when that draw improves? And clearly if we catch that fifth heart here, yes, we definitely wanna play for stacks, especially if it's the non-board pairing heart. So in general, check raising is definitely gonna be a great way to start building that pot as soon as possible. And honestly, C betting and check raising are both valid lines here. And honestly, ace five of hearts is probably gonna be a mixed strategy, meaning we C betted sometimes, we check raises sometimes, but the way this quiz was built is which one of those options do you think is prioritized? Which one should you be doing more often? And I think check raising here is going to be a little bit better. If nothing else, check raising encourages students to stop overly aggressively C betting from out of position, which is very, very valid. And also keep in mind that most opponents will make more mistakes against the check raise than against the C bet here. And that should definitely factor in when you're thinking about which line do you want to take in an exact hand that you may find yourself in. 
All right, question two, we have six five of diamonds and the board is 10, eight, seven with two diamonds on board. And the answers they all gave, 48% said they would fire a C-bet, 19 said they would check call, 33% said they would check raise, and 0%, again, removing those troll answers, said that they would check fold. Now, the recommended answer here is to check with the intention of check calling. And honestly, most players see a big combo draw here and they just get really, really enamored with either C-betting or check raising and going from there, especially with combo draws where you have tons of outs, that's typically what people do. But it's less about how many outs you have and more about the quality of outs you have. Keep in mind that if we improve either way here, right, whether we improve to the straight or we improve to the flush, we never have the nuts. And when that's the case, typically when we're playing those kind of more marginal drawing hands, those are the kind of pots that tend to want to play more of a medium sized pot than necessarily going for the home run. Again, against more fishy opponents, sure, but we don't have information on our opponents, so we're talking more in default here, and this just isn't really the spot where we're always going to want to go for the home run. These kind of draws, again, medium-sized pots, are typically going to be more of our aim, which makes check calling a really, really valid option. And some other things I think about in a spot like this is, what is the range my opponent would give my c-bet action with, right? A lot of people just see bet here as a pure default, so if we were to c-bet here, what kind of range do they call with? And are many of those hands going to fold if we brick the turn and continue to barrel? Are we going to get paid off very often if we improve on the turn and continue to barrel? And what if our opponent raises the flop right this moment? Do we have a profitable plan for that or are we in a really, really bad spot? So these are extra questions you can ask yourself that can really start to help you formulate, hey, is a CBET really going to do great stuff here or should I be looking for another line, either check raising or check calling? Now, I will say right here that if any of these concepts are new to you and you're not really sure what's going on, you're not really sure how this all ties together into a coherent strategy, I would definitely consider pausing here and checking out Core from Red Chip Poker. We have full lessons on everything you need to know, over 100 lessons in total, and we talk about things like c-betting principles, flop textures, runout modeling, barreling, check raising, etc. to help you build and rebuild your strategy as a whole. Core is only five bucks a week, so if you're looking to really learn this stuff and hammer at home, I would definitely suggest checking checking it out today, just visit splitsuit.com slash core. It'll redirect you right where you need to be. Get started and start making some more sense of some of the concepts we're talking about in this video. Trust me, it's really going to help your overall strategy as a whole. All right, so moving on to question three, we have jack 10 of clubs and the flop comes 10, 8, 7 with a club on it. And 56% of y'all said you would fire a c-bet, 36% said check call, 7% check raise, and 1% said you would check fold. So the record recommended answer here is to check with the intention of check calling. So if you keep the following rule in mind, it's really going to help you kind of discern how to play hands like this. Now the rule is simply that good draws are frequently played aggressively, and pair plus draw hands are typically played passively. And in this hand we have exactly that, right? We have top pair plus we have a gut shot to go with it, and we even have clubs so we have a backdoor flush draw to go along with that, which makes check calling especially attractive. Now you may be wondering where the heck this rule comes from, so considering the following couple of points. First is that pair plus draw type hands are less vulnerable than just naked pairs, so protection is less important. Two is that pair plus draw type hands make the absolute best bluff catchers, right? So even if the bluff catching pair isn't good, well, at least the hand still has some suck out potential. And then next is that one pair hands typically aren't strong enough to check raise, but it's certainly rare that we're ever going to want to check fold them on the flop, which means check call becomes super, super good. All right, so moving on, we have ace. 10 of spades and the board is 1095 with a flush draw on it. We have no part of that flush draw. 72% of y'all said you would fire a C bet here. 17 said they would check call. 10 said check raise and 1% said they would check fold. I think some of y'all are bluffing on that one, but I digress. The recommended best answer here is to fire a continuation bet, which most of y'all got right here. So it's helpful to focus on the difference between this hand and the previous one, right? In both cases, we have a pair of 10s on fairly similar board textures, but the difference is that this time our ace 10 of spades has no direct draws or redraws. This means that our pair of 10s is significantly more vulnerable or susceptible to being outdrawn by the river. So by checking, we allow our opponent to potentially see a free turn card and that could be very, very damaging to us. So c-betting becomes the best option because we can one, extract value and that's great, and two, 
two also protect our holding. So even though our opponent may not have a tremendous amount of equity when we fire and they decide to fold with whatever hand they folded with, we are still getting folds from some live equity and that can be a good thing for us. And also if we were to check and our opponent did bet the flop, well, do we really want to check raise, right? Probably not. So what are our other options? So again, definitely in this situation, just go for the c-bet. The overall lesson is that vulnerable pairs should normally be c-bet. And again, especially when they're contrasted to a hand like the previous one where we have not only top pair, but we also have some other draws with it. You can really start to see the difference and start to see how that can formulate a strategy when we think about the vulnerability of a hand and what a check does or doesn't do. All right, so moving on to question five, we have aces on a jack nine six board, giving us an over pair and also a backdoor flush drop. 68% of y'all said you would fire a c-bet in this spot. 14 said they would check call. 18 said check raise and 0% said they would check fold, which I am happy to hear. The best recommended answer here is just to go ahead and fire the continuation bet. While our pair is certainly stronger in this spot versus say the last one where we had ace 10 on a 10 high board, the fundamental principles are the exact same across both hands. We don't want to allow our opponent to unnecessarily see a free card, so it makes sense to go for immediate value. And just to be very, very clear here, aces is right on the cusp of considering using it as a check raising hand, but the more dominant answer would just be to go ahead and see bet it and go from there. All right, moving on to question six, we have eight, seven of diamonds and the board is 10, nine deuce with two spades. We have no backdoor flush draw in this one. 33% of y'all said you would fire a c-bet, 47% said you would check call, 10% check raise, and 10% check fold. And I don't really understand why you would want to check fold here, so I'm not really going to consider that option. In fact, the best recommended option that we have here is to check with the intention of check calling. Now, in reality, this hand will function reasonably well as both a c-bet and also a check call, and check raising, of course, is going to be discouraged since many of our outs are not to the nuts. Since we're going to be c-betting vulnerable pairs, it also makes sense to include some draws as well, since we wouldn't want to make our out of position c betting range exclusively vulnerable pairs. That would be pretty darn bad. But in any discussion that involves out of position play as the preflop raiser, we should heavily lean towards checking with the majority of our range, rather than what most people do, which is c bet with pretty much everything in c bet far too often and get themselves into a lot of not great spots. Again, there are other options beyond just going for the c bet and going from there. So the default recommendation recommended play here would just be to check call with the acknowledgement that we will mix in some c-bets here just at a lower frequency than what we would recommend going for a check call. All right, question seven, we have ace nine of spades and the board texture is jack nine four with two diamonds and we have no backdoor flush draw. So 23% of y'all said you would fire a c-bet, 65 said you would check call, 2% said check raise and 9% said check fold. So the best recommended answer here is to fire a continuation bet, which is not the most popular answer. Most people said they would actually check call here, but really this is another simple example of a vulnerable pair and really it should just be c-bet for protection. We really need to get comfortable with the idea that we might be check calling some top pairs while at the same time c-betting some second pairs and worst kind of pairs as well. So for all intents and purposes, we're not interested in the absolute strength of our pair, rather the level of vulnerability of that pair or just hand in general, as you've seen throughout what we've looked at so far. All right, moving on to question eight, we have ace five of clubs and the board is eight six deuce with one club. 29% of y'all said you would fire a c-bet, 25% said check call, 7% said check raise, and 40% said they would check fold. Now the least popular answer here is actually the one that we would recommend and that is to check with the intention of check raising. Now you may be wondering why that is. Well, we don't necessarily need a direct draw to consider check raising, right? Strong backdoor draws can also be considered. And this is an excellent candidate for a check raise since it does have a backdoor draw to the nut flush. Also as you know, we can catch an ace on uh, the Turner River. We can also back into a wheel, which is great. But if called, we can definitely continue barreling when it comes to that backdoor flush draw when the turn is a club. And it's especially worth noting that in most player pools, low boards and low and dry boards specifically are kind of considered hot spots, which means that most players tend to bet them a ton of the time when checked to, and they often tend to 
to overfold when facing a check raise. This makes this an especially attractive option that very few players consider, right? Only 7% of players here said that they would check raise. And if you think about it, the people that are taking a quiz like this are more likely studying significantly more than just your average player in a player pool. So if the studious players are only check raising this at about 7%, think about how often the normal player is going to be check raising here. That's very, very important information in some of the ways that you should be looking at the data that we're talking about in this video, thinking about what the average player does, who took this quiz, what did they do, and how do other players tend to approach these same exact situations. All right, onward to question number nine, where we have ace five of hearts and the board comes jack eight seven with one heart, two spades. 15% of y'all said you would fire a c-bet, 24% said check call, 3% said check raise, and 59% said check fold. And the most popular answer here is actually the one that we recommend, and that is simply to just check fold. So if you're confused in comparing this to the previous hand, yes, it's true that we also have a backdoor nut flush draw, but that's pretty much all we have in this case. And the biggest part of this is notice the board textures, right? This texture right here, this jack eight seven is extremely connected. Backdoor equity is extremely important on drier textures, but when it comes to really connected textures like this, especially mid-range connected textures, well, all of a sudden that backdoor equity is significantly less important when that's all we have. So as such, we have the luxury of check folding some of our better backdoor equity, just like ace five of hearts here, right? On a jack eight, seven, two spades board, we should have a decent amount of pair plus draw or pair plus backdoor draw combos that allow us to pad out our check defense range. And as such, our check raise range is typically going to have things like direct draws and also flopped monsters. So hands like this don't really have any other place to go other than, again, just check fold. All right, and finally moving on to question 10, we have 10 nine of diamonds and the board is eight five deuce with one diamond. 36% of y'all said you would fire a c-bet here, 26% said check call, 5% check raise, and 33% said they would check fold. And this one honestly is a little bit tricky, but the recommended best answer is to check with the intention of check raising, which unfortunately was the least popular selection for this question. So this one's a little bit tough simply because all options are reasonable apart from actually check folding, which about a third of people wanted to do here. So if you're looking to compete at a high level, you need to get comfortable with the idea that the same hand can be used in different lines. So that means 10 nine of diamonds here could be a check raise at some frequency, a check call at some frequency, and a C bet at some frequency, right? We're doing different things with that same exact hand, just at different frequencies. But if we were forced to pick a default option in this exact situation, a check raise would be excellent. We we have excellent backdoor equity, and again, like we mentioned earlier, the average villain is going to be stabbing this a ton of the time when checked to, and also overfolding against that check raise, which makes it a super viable option, especially because we just have 10 high. Sure, we have a bunch of backdoor everything, but we're totally cool if our opponent just decides to stab fold against our flop check raise. That's totally okay. Again, on this kind of specific lowish, dryish texture. So just in general, in any spot where you are out of position as the preflop raiser, if you're ever in doubt, start with a check, right? And don't always just check fold here simply because, oh, I have 10 high and backdoor nothing. Well, you do have some stuff going on for you. And if you're constantly check folding when you're out of position or even over C betting when you're out of position, you make your opponent's life super, super easy. In fact, you encourage them to call you more often when they have position preflop and put you in more tough spots when you're gonna be out of position going post. So keep that in mind, and if you're the kind of player that just always wants to check fold when you don't have very much, be aware that good players are very, very aware of what you're doing and will make your life a living hell, which is something you want to actively avoid. So after reviewing the answers for all 10 of those questions, there are two major takeaways. And the first one is that players tend to check raise far too rarely. There are tons of spots where your opponents are going to bet too often when you check to them, they're going to overfold when you check raise against them, and there are tons of very, very profitable spots where even hands that you would have otherwise normally check folded could actually make very, very profitable check raises. So keep your eye out for those and look for opponents who are offering you heaps and heaps of fold equity to a flop check raise when you get the opportunity. And then takeaway number two is notice that single pair hands tended to create a lot of confusion for players. If this is the same for you, make sure to spend some time on things like runouts and vulnerability and general protection, and that will go a long way towards helping you make 
make a better decision in real time when you have a single pair, be it top pair, over pairs, middle pair, you need to know how to handle these because these are kind of the better hands that you're going to catch when you're out of position on the flop and you need to know how to handle these in real time. So I'd like to take a moment and thank Red Chip Coach Weasel for creating the questions for this quiz and also offering massive strategic insight to the answer key. Weasel is one of the foremost experts when it comes to player pool analysis, and when you couple his work with GTO solvers, his line work when it comes to both the exploitative side of things and the balance side of things is incredibly immense. Which is exactly why we brought in Weasel to host the group coaching session for Red Chip Poker Pro members on July 31st, 2019. This session is all about see betting out of position and not just in blind versus blind situations rather lots of spots you can handle out of position situations more profitably with a variety of hand strengths flop play is hyper important and even though most players gloss over it missteps on the flop will make your turn in river life infinitely more difficult but the right flop play is going to keep your ranges and your frequencies in check while also setting you up for easier turn and river decisions so if you're watching this video before July 31st, you can lock in your seat right this moment by upgrading to a pro membership. Just visit splitsuit.com pro to get redirected right where you need to be. Upgrade now, lock in your seat, and join the live session. That way you can also ask your questions if you have any as they relate to out of position seat betting or really anything else. Or if you're watching this video after that date has already passed, you can still sign up for a pro membership at Red Chip Poker and watch the entire replay of the out of position seat betting group coaching session by visiting splitsuit.com pro, signing up, and then visiting the group coaching page in the main navigation, checking it out, watching the full thing, and if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask there as well. Either way, I hope to see you there, and if you have any questions about pro, the group coaching session, or anything related to this quiz, please don't hesitate to leave a comment down below, and I'd be happy to get you an answer as soon as I can. As always, thank you so much for hanging out today, especially since this was a little bit of a longer video, but hopefully you enjoyed it, hopefully you enjoyed the day analysis and hopefully again if you go back and re-watch this video see what other people did and think about hey how are people in my player pool likely choosing decisions on these hands and how can I take advantage of them for that right there's not only how do we play this as we're the out of position see better or at least having that option but also how could we react to people that implement this kind of strategy that's kind of a level two and I'll leave that to you, but enjoy that kind of exploration as well. So if you need anything at all, don't hesitate to leave a comment. Otherwise, if you wouldn't mind liking and subscribing, I would massively appreciate that too. And as always, good luck out there and happy grinding.